Here's the deal. I feel like my PVMing has fallen off a little bit in recent months. I used to be a cut above where I'm at, and I wanted to do a mini series where I try some things I've never done before, and maybe even some things that nobody has ever done before. And in this episode, I'll be soloing Solak. Now, I've soloed Solak before, but that was before they changed how phase four works, and the method I used to solo Solak is no longer possible. I also soloed Solak the day after the Fractured Staff of Armadal was released, but the method I used was patched the very next day and doesn't work anymore. So now, it's time to do it legit. Before I get into exactly what we'll be doing, we need to talk a little bit about Solak itself. Solak is a scaled boss, meaning you can bring between two and seven people, and the fight will adapt accordingly. There are some DPS checks along the way and a couple things to look out for, but in general, the main challenge of this is phase four. Not to hit you with an entire guide in the middle of the video, but in phase four, there are two HP bars. The top bar is Solak's remaining HP, and you want to lower it to zero. But while you're doing your damage, there's a bit of a time constraint. Inside the realm, manifestations of Erethor are attacking a second version of Solak and lowering his second HP bar. The lower his real life points are, the faster these manifestations spawn and the faster they will kill him from the inside. If the second HP bar reaches zero, all players in the fight will be instantly killed. There are two approaches to this phase. The basic one involves having one person damage the boss on the outside, while the other player does a little damage but then enters the realm and grabs the aggression of all the manifestations so that they lower the player's HP instead of Solak. This then buys the person outside enough time to finish off the top HP bar and secure the kill. The advanced method is a little more fun. It involves both players dealing as much damage as they can to Solak and completely ignoring the realm and the manifestations. If they can deal the 300,000 damage needed in right around 20 seconds, they should be good to go. A sane person would probably attempt to do the first option, rotating between the manifestations in the realm and Solak in the real world. But I'm no such thing, and I want to do a duo-scaled no realm by myself. This means I'm going to have to deal 300,000 damage in about 20 seconds. If I can manage it, I'll complete the kill, and if I can't, I'll go right back to the beginning and try again. No tricks, no gimmicks, just straight up damage. Now, I'm going to get a little technical here for a quick second. In most instances, the Ripper Demon is the best familiar option. It does a ton of damage, and it boosts your damage dealt as well. But the Fractured Staff of Armadal's damage potential relies heavily on one singular thing, which is your critical strike chance. Because of this, I'm going to load up on every single crit boost in the game to maximize my chances of being able to complete the phase. This means I'll be using a Calgarian Demon Familiar, along with Aerithor's Grimoire, the Biting Four Perk, and the Reaver's Ring. And if you stack all of those boosts on top of each other, you end up with a critical strike right around the 40% mark, which is absolutely ridiculous. So, here's the plan. We're going to load up on crit chance, we're going to solo our way to phase 4 of the Solak fight, and I'm going to hit the boss really hard and hopefully kill it. Let's do this. I kind of shrugged off the difficulty of soloing to phase four of Solak, but it isn't nearly as easy as you might think. In phase one, there's a lot going on. You've got to clear eight sets of roots, as well as solo the DPS check of the arms and legs by yourself, which I found to be a lot more difficult than expected. After the legs, you've got the Blight Core, which has to be lowered to zero HP in order to complete the phase and head into the second one. This is where I ran into my first problem. In order to finish arms and legs and beat that DPS check, I had to use both my Sunshine and my Staff of Armadal Special Attack. This meant that every time the Blight Core spawned, all of my strong damage boosts were on cooldown, and I literally had to use thresholds by themselves. Most of this was poor planning and strategizing on my part. I underestimated Phase 1, and if I were to go again, I would absolutely bring a melee switch to allow me to berserk the core instead of being stuck in what felt like an infinite Phase 1 loop. After over 10 minutes of repeated arms and legs, I managed to get the core down to 0 HP and head into the second phase of the fight. Phase 2 is a very sequential phase. You work through the mechanics and lower Solex HP, and if you do enough of both of those things for long enough, you'll make it to the end and you can get into Phase 3.
If you're someone who's slightly familiar with the Solak fight, you'll see some mechanics that you may have never encountered before. There's a purple tornado that you have to barricade, followed by a set of two extremely slow root projectiles that don't make a lot of sense before you get a third set of rain and then you get to move on to phase three. The third phase is all about getting ready for phase four. I'm stacking storm shards and I'm lowering both Solak and Erethor to get to the phase HP. And I'm making sure I'm ready to deal more damage than I've ever done before. It's worth noting that if I were to ignore the realm entirely on phase three and charge up all of the pads, the manifestations would spawn a little bit more slowly on phase four, which could potentially give me a little more time to work with. But I felt like this would be cheating as it isn't a widely used strategy and it's very time consuming as well. With all the pieces in place, it's time to finish off Erethor and enter the fourth phase. It's time for me to deal more damage than I've ever dealt before or die trying. guys. God game that. We actually God game that. All right, maybe I'm not as washed as uh, as I may have once thought. I believe I'm the second person to ever complete a solo no realm. The first being RSN Rocket Cars or Finn. He's a good friend of mine, and I borrowed heavily from his solo no realm about a month ago, and I wanted to give him full credit because I wouldn't have even attempted this without him sending it to me and letting me know that I should try it. I think I was pretty lucky to be able to complete this on the first try, but with proper setup and rotations, this should be something that could be done pretty consistently, which opens the door to some fun ideas like soloing Solak, but using an alternate account to start the fight and looting on two accounts or whatever else. I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like and subscribe for more similar content. Outside of that, I hope everyone's well, and I'll see you in the next one.